نحمة ونسلي على رسول الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Yes, it's a Tuesday e- on Monday evening If it's Monday evening, it's uh, Radio Al-Ansar It's the Business Matters program with me, Anwar Mullah Just gone uh, 14 minutes past 7 It's 104.4 FM Durban 105.6 FM Peter Marisburg the number in the studio is 060-904-1056. I repeat that, 060-904-1056. The Business Matters program brought to you by the Minara Chamber of Commerce. Talking of the Minara Chamber of Commerce, the annual function of the Minara Chamber of Commerce, the Business Awards function is coming up very, very shortly. Um, I've been asked to remind the listeners that they need to put in their nominations. Nomination dates have been extended a little bit, so you still have a chance to put in your nominations for the various award categories. The one category where they are saying there is a great opportunity is the young entrepreneur category. So if you know of any young entrepreneurs in particular that uh, need some recognition that seem to be applauded or need to be applauded for the strides that they're making in the business world, then please do get hold of the Minara Chamber of Commerce and uh, get your nominations in for the various categories of, of awards. Having said that, uh, let me introduce you to our guest for tonight. And tonight we're talking about the tax season. The tax um, uh, filings are all due, as we know, at the end of August. That's the one. And then the critical date, end of February, being the financial year in. But this, we're talking about the tax filing season. And we got on the line a person that hails from Ladysmith, I think based in Ladysmith. And her name is Humaira Mullah. Humaira, assalamu alaikum and welcome to Radio al Okay, we were expecting to have Humaira Mullah on the line from Ladysmith. Um, that she doesn't seem to be there. So while our um, our technician in the studio gets her and sorts out whatever the problem is, uh, we can keep chatting and talk about the Minara Awards dinner. Yes, this year, this year, I think it's being held at the Orient Hall. Um, previous years it was held at NMJ and certain times it was also held at uh, the Ilangeni but this year we're going to be at the Orient Hall so looking forward to that as well um, do we Zakaria do we have Humaira on the line so Asalaamu Alaikum Humaira Alaikum Salaam Humaira welcome to Radio al good to have you with us on this Monday evening and uh, you joining us uh, from Ladysmith I believe from Newcastle. Are you from Newcastle? Okay. Um, yeah, I knew the. I know the mullahs in um, in in Ladysmith. Not related, although we share the same same surname. But I see you. Do you do spell your name like I do with two L's in the mullah? M double O double L A. So there must be some connection somewhere. But we'll make that haga offline later on. But anyway, welcome to Radio Al Ansar. Thanks for giving up your Monday evening. And Umira, uh, start by by telling us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Humeda. I am an accountant. I have a company called HM Accounting. We offer accounting, tax, data analytics, training services for business owners. Okay, Humeda, are you still there? I'm here. Okay. Umaira, um, have you been uh, in Newcastle all your life or um, have you moved there uh, more recently? I've been here for most of my life. Okay. And your your qualifications? I have my honours in accounting. I have my degree in accounting. I've done a few other certifications. I've done uh, certification in estates, in data analytics. I've done courses in SMEs um, and in SAGE as well. I'm a SAGE practitioner. Okay. Humaira, we're talking about uh, the tax season this evening um, and the requirements in terms of the tax season. So I would believe that, you know, this would probably be quite a 
uh, a busy time of the year for for you um, accountants, especially coming up to the tax filing season. It's extremely busy at the moment. Okay. Also, new legislation coming in regarding the the retirement area, and I'm not sure if you do much in that area. But with the with the two pot retirement season also coming in um, from the first of September. I'm sure that puts extra pressure on people like yourselves. It does, most certainly. Um, but I also think for the taxpayer itself, it offers more flexibility in accessing their retirement savings. Yeah, um, the, 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 the two-pot system, really a, a whole um, story on its own, something that, inshallah, I hope to explore in in one of the future programs during this month, um, because this... There's a lot of uncertainty about what is and what is going to be allowed and not going to be allowed. How does it all work? How much of money can a person get out? Uh, and, you know, people are of the opinion that suddenly there's a kind of uh, um, uh, an early Christmas, so to speak, uh, with the with the two-part retirement system. Uh, I think a bit of, uh, of uh, misgiving there as well because they are, they are tax liabilities and things to consider as well. So I'm sure you... You, you're busy like I am in trying to familiarize yourself with the two-part retirement system and what it does and does not allow. That's right. I think a lot of, you know, the information, even taxpayers and for tax practitioners, as um, the new changes come into effect, we, we sort of got to work through that to actually know what challenges we're facing at that time and how to navigate it. Yeah, you know, inshallah, the next few weeks will will kind of uh, mean lots of attendance of seminars, conferences, webinars uh, to try to um, to familiarize ourselves with with what is happening, and then obviously to roll that out to 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 clients as well. Um, That's cool. Okay, talking about the tax season, um, what are the the key changes in tax regulations for this year? Look, I would say that South Africans can, to a certain degree, breathe a sigh of relief because there's no major tax hikes, no VAT increases, and no wealth tax has been introduced as yet. Plus, the medical uh, tax rebate will stick around for a little bit longer. But with that, there's some challenges too because the government debt is at its highest since 1947. So the government is taking 150 billion rand from the gold and the foreign exchange contingency reserve account over the next three years to help manage this debt. A little bit more into the, the changes that are affecting the individuals and the companies. There's no, with the personal tax rates, although there's no increases in the personal income taxes, uh, the brackets haven't been adjusted for inflation. So if you get an inflation-related raise, you might end up paying more taxes due to that bracket creep. And then we have the tax thresholds as well that remain unchanged. Um, we do have the solar panel rebate, which allowed individuals to claim 25% of the cost up to 15,000 Rand until February 2024. So unfortunately, this is not going to be extended further. We've also got, as you have spoken of, the retirement tax, although the, the tables for the lump sum withdrawals have remained unchanged. Uh, the new two-part retirement system will then now start in September, and we'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. Um, I would also say that the renewable energy incentives, businesses can continue to claim a tax deduction of 125% of their renewable energy investments, but until February 2025. And then one of the other regulations that have come in is the electric vehicle incentive. So starting from March 2026, producers of electric and hydrogen powered vehicles will be able to claim 150% and this incentive will last for 10 years. So this basically means that for every rand that you spend on qualifying expenses, companies can deduct 
150 from their taxable income. And it provides a significant upfront tax relief, thereby enhancing the return on investment for the companies that participate. I think these changes reflect the government's attempt to balance the fiscal stability with promoting growth in the country. Okay. I think you've summed that up quite nicely in a nutshell. Um, the one um, renewable energy incentive that you spoke about, um, 125% tax rebate on um, investments into renewable energy, would that be the Section 12B um, re, um, incentive that you're talking about? Yeah, that is correct. Okay. Would that apply for, for, for companies only, or would uh, individuals be able to take advantage of that uh, um, rebate as well? This is for... Mm, sorry, Ahumira, I, I think we lost you there a little bit. Are you still on the line? I'm still here. Sorry, we're battling to hear you a little bit here. Um, um, if, if you can repeat that, um, I asked whether the Section 12B rebate would be for companies only or would individuals be able to take advantage of that as well? This is for companies only. Okay. 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 Uh, um, what what common mistakes do individuals and businesses make during tax season? And, and how can some of these be avoided? This is actually a really, really good question because these common mistakes actually cost individuals and businesses both penalties and interest with that. So I would say the first thing, and probably one of the simplest, but we tend to overlook it as taxpayers, is that um, the taxpayers miss important deadlines. And this can lead to penalties and interest charges. So I would say to avoid this, taxpayers and business owners should mark their key dates on their calendars, set reminders, and consider filing early. We've also got inaccurate information like errors in your contact number, email addresses, banking uh, details verification, which can also cause processing delays. So to avoid this, I would advise to log into the SARS e-filing system before the filing season and verify that all of these details are correct. I would also say that a lot of the taxpayers experience these delays with their refunds um, without knowing why. And a lot of it is because their banking details have not been verified or need to be updated with SARS. Then the other one is failing to report all income. Uh, so this could include your side jobs or your investment income and keeping thorough records of all of this income sources and ensuring that they are all reported can help avoid penalties with SARS. Also overlooking deductions and credits can result in paying more taxes than necessary. So be sure to touch things and take advantage of all eligible deductions and credits. Some of the common ones include the medical tax credits and the contributions to your pension, provident and retirement annuity funds. There's also the Section 18A donations, home office expenses and travel expenses. Not keeping proper records is another issue because this lack of documentation can make it difficult to substantiate deductions or income in the case of a verification or audit. I see this a lot with the VAT audits in particular because the, the business owners do not check the supplier invoice details to ensure that all of the correct tax details are there. So I would encourage uh, business owners to have a bit of a checklist with the, the items that need to be on a vatable invoice so that they don't have to go through the audit process and then correct it thereafter, resulting in a delay with their refunds as well. Also for businesses, ignoring provisional tax payment is a, is a very common mistake. Um, because they can lead to penalties when you have your income tax come up and you've underestimated your 
your taxes. Also, um, incorrectly categorizing your expenses is another common business error. It's very crucial to differentiate between what is a capital cost and what is an operating cost, because sometimes assets are, are misstated as expenses. So you miss out on the depreciation that you could have claimed with that as well. Also, I think that um, we must not forget about dormant companies. So even if you have a company and your company is not active or like trading, you still need to submit a return for that company because you end up in incurring penalties for the returns not submitted. And I would say that with regards to individuals and businesses, sometimes handling your taxes by yourself, especially complex cases, can cannot be the best thing for you. So in that in that case, I would say please consult tax advisors. Like yourself, okay. Um, um, Humera. Um, we talk about provisional taxes, and we know end of August is is a time when provisional taxes need to be paid. Um, perhaps one of the reasons why people tend to to delay um, or not do things um, in 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 appropriate times is because there's there's cash flow implications. Now you touched on a, a point which says uh, you have to. Uh, declare your income, your provisional or incomes up to a certain percentage. You can't be far off the mark. Uh, talk us through some of the the kind of penalties or how 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 does one need to determine this and how close does one need to be to the actual figure at the end uh, without having to incur any penalties? Okay, Umira seems to have muted herself for some reason, so we'll try to get her back on the line. Um, but we've been talking to Umira Mullah from Newcastle. Um, um, Zakra, if you can try to get her back, uh, or technician here trying trying to see if we can get Umira back on the line. We've been talking about uh, the tax season, um, tax that has to be filed at the end of August, especially those that are paying provisional taxes. And uh, some of the common mistakes uh, Humera pointed out that uh, people make. Um, obviously, one is just ignoring that and then hoping it'll go away, which it doesn't. It's a, there's only two things that are certain in life, and that's a taxes and debt. So you have to pay your taxes, whether you like it or not. And the sooner we get onto it, um, the better. Um, I'm not sure if we've got Humera back, uh, Zakaria. We do. Humera, sorry, we lost you there. Um, are you are you back with us? Um, yeah. Okay, Humera, we we lost you for a while. I think the because we're on a WhatsApp call with you, it's uh, it, it's um, it's the line is not so great. So we're going to explore some of the other um, challenges, and um, um, we we're going to talk to you about how one can optimize uh, tax breaks or, or, or tax rebates while staying within legal boundaries. But before we do that, uh, can we just go for a short ad? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you've just joined us, you would Anwar Mullah, and it's the Business Matters Program on Radio Al Ansar. Business Matters brought to you by the Minara Chamber of Commerce. Uh, before we went on the ad break, I was speaking to Humaira Mullah from um, Newcastle. Humaira has um, an accounting firm called HM Consulting. Um, very well versed in all fields of accounting and more. Um, so, Humera, um, we've got you now on a on a landline, and hopefully, it's better than the WhatsApp line we've been using before. So, can you hear us uh, quite loud and clear? I can hear you. Can you hear? Yeah, it's a little bit better than it was. So, let's see how long it lasts. But we can in, in, try to pick your brain and hopefully get through to the end of the program. Um, Humera, um, the question I alluded to before we went off uh, line or for the ad break was, um, how can small businesses optimize their, their tax returns while staying within legal boundaries? So, wow, there's quite a few ways here. Mm. 
Okay, Umera, um, you want to talk us through some of these ways in which uh, taxes can be saved while staying within legal boundaries? Okay, uh, Zakaria, I think we seem to have uh, lost Umera there again. Um, hello? Uh, hello, Umera, are you, are you there? Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just telling myself. Okay. Okay, we're waiting for you, Humaira, to take us or talk us through some of the salient points. So, Jazakla, for that question, I think optimizing tax returns is absolutely crucial for small businesses, especially since they don't have the extra amount, um, amount of money to spend. And there are several effective strategies to achieve this while remaining compliant with legal requirements. The first one I would say is utilizing available deductions. So it would be essential for small businesses to ensure that all legitimate business expenses, such as rent, utilities, office supplies, and salaries, are documented and clean. For those operating from home, a portion of the home expense can be deducted. Ad additionally, travel expenses relating to business ex um, activities, including vehicle costs, can be claimed. Another big one is taking advantage of tax incentives and allowances. Small businesses should take ad advantage of tax incentives and business, uh, business allowances as follows. The so one is a small business corporation tax, FTC tax rate, which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. Um, qualifying as an FTC can provide access to lower tax rates. To qualify, the business has to meet certain criteria. So the gross income for the year must be less than 20 million. The shareholders or the members the individuals and not other companies or those corporations. Business must be active, meaning it cannot earn more than 20% of the income from investment or rental. It should not be a personal service provider or a professional service company unless it employs at least three full time employees who are not shareholders or members. The other is micro businesses. For micro businesses, the turnover tax is tax system is an option. So the simplified tax system is available for businesses with an annual turnover of one million or less. It replaces the income tax, tax, provisional tax, capital gains tax, and government tax. The other one is the research and tax incentive. So businesses engaging in research and development activities can claim additional deductions. To qualify for the research and development activities, they must be undertaken in South Africa. They must seek to achieve scientific or technological advancement, and they must involve the development, improvement, or creation of new products, processes, or services. Also, they must be approved by the Minister of Science and Technology. And this incentive allows for the 150% deduction of eligible research and development expenditure, providing significant tax savings for businesses investing in innovation. I would also like to say again, provisional tax payments. So making use of the provisional tax payment is another important strategy. And claiming tax credits and rebates, one of those being the Employment Tax Incentive, which is the ETI, and this ensures hiring businesses to employ young workers. It's also very important to stay informed about tax law changes to ensure your compliance and take advantage of new opportunities. 
Okay, Mumero, thanks for that. Um, tell us, what are some of the deadlines and important dates for filing taxes in South Africa? So from the 1st um, of July to the 14th of July, auto assessment purchases were sent out. Um, but remember that it's the taxpayer's responsibility if the tax return is correct. So don't just assume that the auto assessment is correct. Go through your auto assessment and make sure that that is correct. The tax filing season opened from the 15th of July. Uh, Non-provisional taxpayers, so those individuals who are not paying provisional taxes, they are not registered for provisional taxes, the tax season will end on the 21st of October. Provisional taxpayers, however, have until the 20th of January 2025 to file their tax returns. Trusts would need to file their returns between the 16th of September and the 20th of January 2025. Then we have the first period of provisional tax that's coming up and that would be due by the end of August. And the second period is due by the 28th of February. There's also a voluntary top-up period, which is due by the 30th of September, 2025. Then we have our company income tax returns, which must be filed within 12 months of their financial year end. We also have the employer reconciliation or the EMP 501. And those, the first one is due by the 31st of October 2024. And the second, second one is due by the 31st of May 2025. And just some other monthly ones, uh, or by bi, monthly ones, is the VAT return. So VAT returns are due by the 21st of every month. And the EMP 201s are due by the 7th of the following month. Okay. Um, and obviously, financial year in being end of February, so lots to uh, file at the end of February in terms of uh, making sure that all your annual uh, contributions to retirement annuities, etc., are all done before the end of February. That's correct. Okay. Okay, Mira, lastly, um, how does the tax season impact different sectors of the economy? And what should businesses in these sectors be mindful of? So, tax season can really shake things up across the various sectors, not just the accounting sector. So, in the retail and the consumer goods sector, Tax refunds mean that people are ready to spend. So retailers often see a boost in sales. They should plan for extra inventory and keep track of all their sales and expenses. And don't forget to use the sector-specific tax breaks like your VAT refunds. With the hospitality and tourism industry, people love to travel more when they have tax refunds. So the hospitality businesses need to manage their cash flow and keep detailed records. There are also some great tax incentives for things like employee training and energy efficiency improvement. In the construction and retail industry, we'll see changes in property deals and new projects. So again, it's crucial to keep meticulous records of all the expenses and to understand the tax implications of property transactions, which includes capital gains tax. Also, don't miss out on the deductions for equipment and materials. With technology and startup, for the tech companies, they should definitely claim the research and development tax incentives document all of their business expense, expenses and plan for potential tax liabilities from any stock options and other incentives. Healthcare, 
um, tax laws can affect the health care benefits and expenses significantly. So keeping started records of billing and operational costs, staying updated on tax incentives for medical equipment, and managing the tax side of charitable contributions are key. Agriculture is a seasonal business which impacts cash flow and tax planning. So farmers should time their income and expenses to optimize their tax outcomes. They should use agricultural incentives and maintain accurate production records. Manufacturers should focus on capital investments and inventory management. They should use deductions for equipment purchases and maintenance. They should also keep de detailed records of inventory and explore tax credits for energy efficient practices and training programs. Thank you. Umera, um, thanks for, for that. Um, your your time spent with us has been very, very helpful. Any parting um, um, advice that you would like to to impart uh, to people that are now approaching the tax season? And uh, any, based on your experience, anything that you'd like to share with our listeners? I would say to keep abreast of the tax changes and to also consult with their accountants and tax practitioners on these uh, changes and what benefits they can utilize. I think it's very important for taxpayers and business owners to go to their accountants and relate their experiences and let them and their accountants sit down and figure out a way to work it out for their business best. Also, I would say don't leave any of your tax return filings for the last minute. Give yourself sufficient time to prepare, to engage with an accountant or compile it yourself instead of waiting for the very, very last minute to file it. Okay, thanks for that. That's sagely advice, um, and inshallah we will follow that. Um, Umera, once again, thanks for joining us tonight on Radio al -Ansar. Um, I'm sure it's pretty cold out there in Newcastle, as uh, as it's cold here in Durban. But 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 Ladysmith, Newcastle, Moira Escort gets a lot lot colder. So keep warm, and uh, inshallah, we hope to speak to you again sometime on Radio Alansar regarding tax and tax matters and uh, accounting matters in general. So uh, thanks for giving up your evening and joining us. I mean, Jazaka to you for having, and Jazaka for to the listeners for listening. Okay, with that, uh, it's me signing off uh, with from the um, Business Matters program. Uh, just a g reminder once again that the Minara Business Awards are coming up. Please do get your nominations in. Um, the uh, time has been extended by a few days. So get in those nominations. Uh, nominate people that you feel are deserving of these awards, uh, these really prestigious awards. Um, they take place towards the end of October, but uh, the judges need to be looking at the entries and uh, assessing all of them. So get them in timelessly. Uh, with that, uh, inshallah, I hope to join you again next week on another Business Matters program. Um, and we thank Umaira Mullah for joining us today from H&M uh, Consulting in Newcastle. And it's wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.